and welcome to A Life Full of Meaning. My name's Lisa and this is Glenn. And together we make a weekly vlog. To record our search for a more meaningful life. So, without further ado, let's show you how the week unfolded. Good morning, good morning. And welcome to Saturday. You find us still in Prixham and we're just walking to see if we can catch the 10.15 bus. It's currently 10.14 and we're not at the bus stop. So it's been very tense getting out the caravan this morning. There's the bus. That's what happens when we faff around. Anyway, let's get a drink guys and we'll get the next one. Oh, I knew that was gonna happen. Right, we've had a drink. We are now walking to the bus stop for the second time. Where hopefully a bus will be along shortly. Off we go. Boys are talking about their crabbing spot. Well, wow, that's a good throw. Leo's got a baby mini crab. The Dart Explorer coming in, packed with people, coming to Brixham for the day. It's got a fish. Three fish. Leo's got his, his neck caught under a rock. Are you alright with that? Oh my goodness. This man's a miracle worker. You're a hero. You crabs. So you've got a fish and a baby crab. You've got two crabs and a fish. Just let him go, Ryan. How do you feel about letting your crab and your fish go? We're going now. That was quite a stressful crabbing time. So our net got stuck. A man next to me borrowed the fishing rod from somebody else and after me trying to get out for 45 minutes they did it in about 30 seconds so anyway we are off now to do our final bit of gift shopping before we head back to the caravan to pack up to go home let's go i'm off to work this morning because we've got a fun day going on in great linford this is where the event's being held today on this football pitch unlock the gate looks like someone's done a bit of a burnout there on a bike yeah so this is the pitch that they're using today. I'm in the Noddy bus today because I've got to pick the tables up from the building next door. I'm just waiting for Tommy to come in the other van so there's someone here. We return. Been like an adventure today. Yeah. What with missing the bus, getting the crabbing line stuck and someone having to rescue it. We got a taxi home. We just couldn't be bothered to wait for the bus, I know, it's lazy. Let's make some lunch, then we need to tidy up because Beffy is on her way. While I'm between jobs at the council, I've just nipped down the boat to do a couple of little jobs. I'm not gonna get loads done, but I'm just gonna have a look at the ignition because the ignition's been playing up. So I'm just stripping it out, get some tools and show you what I'm up to. So I've just stripped the ignition out and I've just noticed that the back casing is, is coming away, which would which will what be causing the starting issue and also going to clean all these terminals up as well because they're all a bit a bit manky that won't be helping it start either so i'm just going to give them a clean up so i've had a look at the ignition i've managed to manage to get the uh, ref counter going as well but um something's still not right hey you made it hello lexi let's leave beth and john unpacking we're leaving leo we got ryan we got nan let's get home it's 11 o'clock i've just walked through the door drop ryan home drop mum home that was a long drive but yep yeah, i'm home and i'm going straight to bed and i'll see you in the morning i've decided no time like the present i'm going out for a walk i'm going to stop in at the gym i'm going to familiarize myself with the gym ready to go tomorrow yeah that's what i'm gonna do am i a little bit nervous yes i am I'm not gonna let it stop me though so i'm going for a walk gonna stop in at the gym so here we are at the leisure center let's go check it out 
Well, that wasn't too bad. A little bit intimidating there. Spoke to someone in the gym, booked in an induction, got the name of a personal trainer. I think I need all the help I can get. So I'm gonna give her a call and yeah, let's go from there. Okay, shower change. Let's go buy some delicious food. Yeah. I'm hungry and I'm tipping over into hangry. That's what I've just told Mr. Warner when he's asking me questions like, where, what, how, why? I'm like, let's just go get some food. Mia has had her hair cut. It looks lovely, my darling. I want you to be like my nana and I want you to be like one of my friends. Oh, it looks lovely. Mia's dog sitting. They're looking after Olaf. Right. Oh. right, that's a couple of bits dropped off that I'd left in the car that were Ryan's. Well, honestly, last night when we arrived back, it was dark and I didn't do a very good look through the boot. When I got home last night, Naomi texted me and she said, uh, Ryan's got no shoes. I was like, mm, they're in the car. So we just dropped those off. Uh, we're just nipping to the office now and we're just doing a quick dispatch and then on to get food. So we're done at the office. I'm sending a parcel to my friend Tracy in Wales. She's lost a load of weight, like loads of weight. And I saw a picture of her recently wearing a Be Kind hoodie and it looked about 18 sizes too big. So I thought I'd pop another one in the post to her. So anyway, we'll do this and then on our way to the shops to get some food. My goodness you wouldn't believe it Nam has been in touch they've announced the day that the game show is airing yes what I'll do I'll get home I'll have a proper look and then I'll let you know right while we're in and I'm having a look when this game show's airing Mr Warner is sorting the table out we bought this table when we moved in last November and this leaf it's supposed to unfold, never worked. Glenn's just worked out, it's been put on back to front. It's gonna fix it. Anyway, Glenn's gonna do that. I'm gonna check out when this game show's on. So here we have it. We've made it onto the BBC schedule. Game on grandparents. We'll be on Thursday the 18th of August at 10 past nine on CBBC. Oh my goodness. Ryan's actually going to be away when this airs, which is a real shame. I would have loved to have watched it with him. Right, Glenn's got his drill out. It's going under. Fix it, Mr Warner, fix it. It'd be nice to have that table fold out. Whilst Mr Warner is, is still fixing the table, I'm going to stick dinner in. I've got a joint of lamb, which is going in the oven. I've put some garlic some salt and pepper i was going to do some red wine do it in a little bar for red wine didn't have any so i just poured a bit of port over there i mean if in doubt pour the port on that's what i say is this the moment the big reveal does it actually work right here we go here we go da, 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 da. oh yes love it glenn's on a mission to complete the boat cover that he started making a while ago. Mr Warner, what are you doing now? Well, the fan must have fallen over and all the mechanism's broken. So I'm just trying to make it a bit safer. Whilst Mr Warner's fixing fans, I am cooking dinner. So we've got the lamb in the oven. And I've just got some chopped spinach here and some onions. And I'm gonna cook that with the rice for spinach rice. So in addition to the spinach rice and the lamb, I'm going to make a carrot salad. We'll have that with some hummus and some green veg, I think. Yeah, I might even roast a bit of broccoli. Basically, it's going to be a plate of goodness. Oh my goodness. Just look at that. Just look at that. It smells so good. We've got the spinach rice. We've got the carrot salad. 
some ready-made hummus. I'm not falling for that mistake again by making my own. And some roasted green veg. Let's dish it all up. A bowl of deliciousness. There was enough for lunch tomorrow as well. Good morning and welcome to Monday. It's about 20 past 10. I've done a couple of hours of work already, yeah. On it this morning. Work is done for the day. That's a lie, actually. I've got a meeting tonight from 7 till 9, so it's not quite done for the day. But I'm putting my computer away. I'm being strict with myself this week on the time I spend. I've contacted a personal trainer. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm committed to this getting fit malarkey. I really am. Talking of getting fit, I am off out for a walk in a minute. I desperately need a haircut. Like, desperately. I don't even know what to say about my hair, to be honest. Apart from it looks a white mess. I'm speaking to Dawn and Kaz later for our book writing project. And today, I want to catch up with loads of friends. So it's a catch up sort of day. Bit boring for you though. Glenn is going to come to the boat later when I'm at my meeting. He's got a couple of jobs to do there. I think that's about it for today so far. I'm going to go this way through the trees and get some shade. So warm outside. I've got a robot over here. He's been foxed by an overhanging bush. Oh man, he's off the curb. Oh man. Shall I go help him? Oh, let me help him. Oh, robot disaster. Hold on, robot. Hold on. Let's get you back on. Oh. They weigh a ton. There we go. Go on. Oh, man. And he's off. Go on, on your way. Oh, my goodness. It's so warm out there. I was trying to find shady trees. I found a robot that had fallen off the curb. I am going to jump in the shower, get changed, and I'll check in with you later. You'll never guess what. I forgot to cancel Gusto again. So, a box has just arrived. I've no idea what's in it. What's in the box? What's in the box? Let's have a look. Da, da, da. Now, I didn't pick these, obviously, because I didn't know it was coming. What we got? Chicken and butternut squash chickpea stew on oh. a hot day. You, nice. you sound excited about that. Thai-style beef with mince rice with my mange tau. <coughs> mange too, Rodney. Mange, mange too. Look at that. That's another hot one, isn't it? Oven-baked Greek cheese and tomato chicken fart farfella. <laughs> Pasta. And haddock pakoras well at least we got some food though which is a good thing well i'm off to work with mr warner we're taking the van we're taking the gusto stuff put in the fridge of the boat because we're going out in the boat later this week i've got exciting news to tell so exciting news to tell i've just had a phone call from naomi who had a phone call from the production company now apparently you know our episode is airing next thursday at 10 past 9 in the morning well what they've said is potentially after the first episode airs at 10 past 9 on monday because we're the fourth in the series you should be able to access the whole week's episodes you should be able to that's what he's saying if that's true that means at half past nine on monday morning we should be able to watch the episode it's another beautiful evening the grass everywhere is looking well Very yeah let's just say not green it's difficult to imagine that in just like three months all these trees are going to be bare and we'll be moaning about the rain and the cold it's just difficult to imagine on a glorious sunny evening like today so this is the start of my cover basically i've just done a where the holes need to be 
and the clips and I just need to sort the sides out. So that's one of my boards. I've just put the trim around it, that's what I'm going to do on all of them. I've got to count the sink the screws. I'm going to do that with all the boards. Put some metal trim around it, count the sink the screws. I mean the boards are not new but they look a bit better than the old green stuff. There's a couple of scratches, I'm going to get some brown to touch them up. There's a few little holes there which had brackets in them. I'm just going to put some filler in those. I'm taking the door off for now. That's just going to make showering a bit easier. So I'm just going to have a tidy up before I go. I've got to pick Mrs Warner up at nine o'clock. But I've got a lot of stuff in here, but I've got a lot of projects on the go. I've got all this to put back on the boards underneath, which I want to stop somewhere and do. Let's get a bit tidied up because I've made a bit of a mess. So I finished at the boat. I turned the fridge up a little bit, which I think spanked the batteries a little bit to keep the, the food cool. So hopefully it will uh, be all right tomorrow. It was like down to 12.3 before I left. It's not even dark yet. So, anyway, fingers crossed it'll be alright. So Glenn's picked me up. The meeting, endlessly interesting. Before I started working for the parish council, I never knew what went on at a parish council meeting. Never knew. Glenn did because he attended many while he was in the police. I find it fascinating. Anyway, we are on our way home now. We're back at work tomorrow, both of us. Good morning and welcome to Tuesday. I was going to say Wednesday because I'm going to work. It's not even Wednesday, it's Tuesday. Yeah, I've swapped my days around because I'm doing something very exciting tomorrow. I'll tell you about that tomorrow. Anyway, we are on our way to work and I'll catch you later. Good afternoon. Yeah, that's the work day done. It goes like that, quick as a flash it does. Anyway, we're on our way home now, and then we'll be heading to the pub to see our friends, Joe, Neil, Zara and Paul. Have not seen them for weeks. We're off to the pub. Can I just say, I haven't packed for tomorrow, and we got a full day. I'm feeling a little bit stressed about that. So we're at the pub, there's a hot air balloon floating by. Good to see our friends. Good morning. And welcome to Wednesday that feels like a Friday. The reason why it feels like a Friday, well, there's just so much good stuff going on. We're off on the boat, but before we get to go, Mr. Warner, he has to go to work. Not me, oh no. I'm not off to work today, I'm off for an adventure. No, I am, I am. <laughs> Firstly, I'm seeing Miramar. I am so looking forward to seeing her. I don't think I've seen her. Well, it's been months. The second thing I'm not so sure about. Way back in January, for Miramar's birthday, I bought her a beekeeping experience. She was very happy with it. I thought, Miramar, she's not gonna wanna go on her own to this beekeeping experience. So, as a good friend, I will go with her too. So, today, in August, a whole seven eight months after i brought the birthday present we are now going on the beekeeping experience no wearing strong perfume or deodorant bees don't like it no eating bananas well that's all right i don't even like bananas need to take welly boots and socks that's fine right that's glenn dropped off now on to pick miramar up so we found it tucked away along a street a normal street is this magical place and i've just met a man called steve who's going to tell us about it so this is the urban farm we're part of the christian foundation if you look behind me you can see a lot of growing beds we've got the beds outside we've got 19 beds we've got three polytunnels greenhouses chickens and we do a forest school as well and we the main aim is to work with children who are not in education and training somehow school pass them by and hopefully after working here for a time they'll go on to college and do agriculture brilliant and steve you've also got bees haven't you we've got bees oh. that's what we're going to be doing today we've got <laughs> we've got seven hives here and we've got two in the city 
uh, and today we're going to do a, a, a talk about the bees and then these lovely people are going to come and inspect with us. Oh brilliant, thank you Steve. Look at this, this is amazing. Tucked away along a normal street. We drove past this. The charity that we all work for is called Milton Keynes Christian Foundation and we run eight small businesses um, that young people who are not in education or employment or training come and work on those businesses. So at the Herb Farm here, we've got three of those mini businesses. One's Urban Believers. One is growing people, growing all of the vegetables and fruit and looking after the chickens. And then right in the corner of the site, we've got a massive teepee and there's a forest school there that we run. So those are three of the, the small businesses that we run. Look at those. Is this by the, the Willow Dome. <laughs> Look at this place, it's amazing. What we're going to do is light our smokers. We just give them a little puff of smoke before we go in, because what that does, that calms them down. This is basically showing you how the hive is made up and what we're going to see when we go, when we go in. We have a little puff of smoke in the front and we'll take the roof off. And there's a crown board. There'll be some bees on the top of this, not many, and they'll be calm. Take the crown board off, and then we're into what we call the, what's called the super. This is where the honey is. Yeah. Sure. So it's if you hold it up to the light, you'll naturally prepare comb. Is oh. they will create the honeycomb shape, oh. but they will build two parts of it, and it's off centre because this gives it the really strong structure. Yeah. Uh, we have these castellations in the box, which gives a, a decent space. So they, there's there's ten frames in there. They fill it up with honey. When it's capped, that's what we take off. The the worker bees can go through this, but the queen can't because she's a bit bigger. The last thing we want is the queen laying in here. We have a thing called a, a, a dummy board that, that will come out. That's just to make the space. And we have 11 frames. So we have to break that seal and then we take the frame out. And we, this is what we will see. We will see stuff like this at the top. That's a lot of bees. Yeah, so there's the, this is the honeybee, which is Apis mellifera. Yeah. I'll just give you these things. I'm just going to myself. If I could just give you one of these. All right, time to get suited up. Do you, do you feel like a ghostbuster? I do feel a bit like a ghostbuster. I'm in. I've got to put my glasses on, so I need to unzip, put my glasses on. Is there pockets? Oh, excellent. We're ready. Let's go. Let's do this. It is a bit weird getting used to looking through the veil. Too. Yeah, I'm turning it. it. Yeah. yeah. The way the colony is organised, we've got two horseshoes, so we can all work behind the hives, never be in front of the hive. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to split into two, two or three of you go and we'll look at that hive first. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we've done that one, I think we'll come and look at this one. Yeah, we do this together. Do this together, because this is a bit special. And at the moment, can you see this is a really ugly bit of gaffer tape. And, yeah. um, so basically I've reduced the entrances down because there's wasps about at the moment. We don't want everything. Yeah, we, we're giving them a, a smaller amount of space to have to defend against the wasps. So yeah, then we basically take the roof off, put it down to one side. But there's not many on top, is there? I thought there'd be loads more. Here, what we've got, so we've got the brood box at the bottom, which has the queen in and the babies. Yeah. And then this is the honey box on top with the queen excluder. Yeah. So we have been taking some honey from these hives. I'll just take that so you can have a little look in here. So this is the honey box. So this is where they're going to be working um, the honey at the moment. Ah, oh, look at them, they're so beautiful. Yeah, they are really awesome. So I'll just take one of these out for you to have a look at. So we're saying about that they cap the honey with the porous yeah. cappings. So this is a frame of honey that wow, is pretty that? much capped. Do you want to come and have a hold? If you just hold that, you can feel it's quite heavy. Yeah, I've got it. Can you feel the weight of it? Yeah, it's massively. It's good, okay. isn't it? But I can see them going in and wiggling around the little honeycombs. Yeah, so what they're probably doing there is they work really hard. So nectar is a lot, a really a lot of water. Yeah and with some sugars and what they do is they actually reduce the nectar the water content of the nectar from by 80 percent wow. so they do that in the hive and that concentrates the sugars yeah and then as they're packing it into the cells yeah i think what they're doing there is actually making the wax cappings yeah to cover over the rest of that little bit they're of nectar all working in the, so hard aren't yeah they? you can see the see the shiny nectar this end before they before they start capping it yeah 
in the glands in their heads they actually as they're processing the nectar and reducing the water content that's when they add in these enzymes that give the honey its antibacterial properties so here's the queen excluder so obviously we were saying earlier that you put the queen excluder in between the brood box and the honey because you don't want the queen to come through here and lay eggs in there really yeah. so what i do is i just take this off i double check that the queen isn't on there do, yeah um, does the light affect them a lot like the sunshine not really but they're just not used to it because they live in darkness all the time yeah. so i just always have a little double check that she isn't on there and then i just prop this at the front of the hive so that it's really easy for all those bees hanging out to get back in the hive if they yeah. want to normally they just stay there until i put it back on but um then what we do is we just work our way through through the hive you can come a bit closer if you okay. want to and then basically i just work my way through the colony and the reason for doing this is at this time of year it's just double check that all is well really that there's a queen there that she's laying and in the brood box these frames are obviously a bit deeper than the ones in the honey box and the wax changes color when it's been used several times for babies to okay. develop in it so that's why that's that frame's a bit darker and what you do is when you take it a frame you always just look at one side and then flip it over and look at the other side and then pop it back down we always keep them in the same order that yeah. the bees have them in on this frame um you can see it's just fully capped with this biscuit color capping so this porous wax capping and there's baby bees developing under every single one of those cappings oh, that's amazing. so yeah they will emerge on day 21 after the egg is laid and yeah so this is a really good sign because it just means that there's new bees that are about to yeah. come out mirror mask gonna have a go at yeah. holding a frame do you want to if you hold it over the high so if you did drop it or whatever then it'll go can, yeah walk a bit closer yeah and then in the middle can you see all the different colored pollen yeah so that's all the different pollen from all the different flowers did you say 20 pounds of honey yeah when it's full when it's, it's full box, yeah wow it's a lot of honey isn't it it is a lot of honey that was excellent a little bit scary at times it, quite frankly quite terrifying but miramar she loves it she's well in there as a reward for all our hard work we're going to get a bit of cake drizzled with honey so yeah best part of the day for me um, so what have we got here so this is a vegan carrot cake yeah that is made by the think food social enterprise in wolverton and then i've just drizzled some of the urban believers honey oh top, we obviously needed a yeah of honey today, so it looks delicious so yeah it's really tasty miramar yes how was that experience it was so good thank you very you, much lisa you love those bees I didn't love you they're so cute i, I love them <laughs> <laughs> Miramar wants bees. I would love a bee. She, <laughs> you want a pet a bee? A bee baby. <laughs> a <yeah>. bee baby. <laughs> Keep it in my pocket. So we're off to buy some honey now. So they've actually run out of runny honey, but I said it doesn't matter because we'll come back because they have a little market here on a Thursday, I think from one till six. So I'm definitely coming back for some runny honey. So this is the Herb Farm Market, Thursday afternoons for 1 p.m. Now we know this place is here, we will definitely be back. So who knew such a fabulous place existed? Not me, not me. It makes me wonder how many of these marvellous places are dotted around that we just don't know about. So I just want to show you, just right when I said this is just like a normal everyday street, with this little farm tucked alongside down down a little pathway i wasn't kidding in fact we drove straight past it when we first came in not knowing this was even here so i've dropped miramar off i've picked mr warner up and here we are at the boat we're just getting ready to get on our way mr warner just topping up with a bit of oil not too much though so now Glenn's fixing ignition. I'm hoping for an easy start. Let's see. Yay. Not rev counter works. It's the little things. And we're off. Mr. Warner's going to drop me off on the other side. So I can jump off and go for an evening walk. Oh, 
<laughs> and off Mr. Warner goes. See ya. See ya. Well, we're aiming to stop at Cosgrove this evening. What a lovely evening it is though. Oh my goodness. Look at the baby swans. They're not babies any longer. I know I say it every time we go out in the boat, but I love our little boat. I really do. I'm coming off the towpath. I'm walking where it's a bit shady. Oh, this is better. Nice shady spot. That shade was short lived. I'm back out into the sun. We've got Electra coming past silently. Here's my baby swans that are no longer babies. Just taking a moment to wait under the bridge in the shade for Mr. Warner. Another bridge I'm stopping under to wait for Glen to cool down. Mr. Warner's coming in. Right, I'm on board now. It's just too hot to walk out there. Anyway, I'm going to take a seat. I'm going to ring my mum and uh, catch up on her day. Over we go, over the aqueduct. Over we go. Right, I'm going to start cooking dinner. We're on our run up to Cosgrove, so we'll be more in, I don't know, in about 10, 15 minutes. Over the iron trunk aqueduct we go. Never get bored of this. Over the river. And here we are at Cosgrove. We're going to moor up this side of the lock beauty of being a 30 foot boat pretty sure we can squeeze in somewhere here we go easy peasy that was quick change and we're going to take a stroll to the pub where there's a lime and soda with my name on because I'm very hot and very thirsty you know the routine down through the horse tunnel through the horse tunnel we go you know what we haven't brought with us torch we're walking back from the pub. There's a boat coming along the canal, lighting up the way. I love walking along the towpath at night. Just look at that moon. What an amazing sight. Good morning and welcome to Thursday. We're at Cosgrove and we're not moving very far today. Our plan is to get to the bottom of Stoke Bruin Locks. I I've been working here this morning, I have, I'm on it. Uh, we're not rushing off this morning. It's a beautiful sunny day. Again, it's gonna be hot, so we don't wanna be rushing around. It was all a bit rushy yesterday. So today, a much slower, gentler pace of life. As I said, I've got some work to do, so I'm just gonna crack on with that. I think Glenn might make me a bacon sandwich in a bit. He's nodded affirmatively at that one. So anyway, I'm going to crack on. I just wanted to pop in, say good morning to you. And I'll let you know when we're off. Well, it's now 20 to 1. We've had the most relaxing morning. We are setting off. We may break the journey into two parts today. Not because it's a long journey. It's just because it's hot out there. And it's hot standing on the back of the boat with the sun beating down. It is a 
gourd chart out there today. Warm, warm, warm. Change of plan. We have literally stepped outside and we were like, it's too hot. It's too hot to be standing on the back of the boat. So, Mr. Warner is time back up and we're going to stay here till tomorrow. We're going to leave here tomorrow morning. We'll leave early while it's cooler. There's three boats that have just moored up. Two behind us, one in front, and it's a bit like, nah, two up. I'm going to crack on with video editing. Just yeah. See what out there. So I've just had a quick look in the back of the boat. There was a twist isolator, and I didn't know what it was for. Uh, I presumed it was for the inverter, and it is. So you can actually turn the inverter on and off from out the back. So that means I can leave it on. I'll show you quickly what I mean. Basically switched off at the moment. So I found out where that wire goes, that's this wire here, that's the one that goes to that battery which is for the 12 volt socket at the front of the boat, which seems a little bit weird to do that. So I'm going to change that, I might even put a buzz bar in here. This is all coming out anyway, I'm going to redo these electrics, put in the new charger in and stuff at the back of this cupboard. It's got a little buzz bar at the back there but it's, a, it's an earth one and it's pretty... It's pretty ropey and the wiring that's been used and it's not really the correct tampage so I'm going to change all that. This is getting serious. Huh? Glenn is trying to move the inverter but he's barricaded himself in so we can't actually see what he's doing. I'll show you when I've done it. But I'm going to drill a round hole yeah. in the end of this cover because we're getting rid this is all changing anyway and you're going to be able to put your finger in it and flick the switch. <laughs> That would be much easier. <laughs> right, I'll leave you to that. Right, Mr. Warner, you're released from your barricade. Tell us yeah. what you've been doing. So, basically, our inverter's under there. Yeah. Um, I thought it had a battery backup, but I've just realised I've lit picked it up and there's no batteries in it, so they've always been taken out. So anyway, and we had to lift this bed every time we wanted to turn it on and off. So I've mounted it on the side here now. Yeah. And see this little yeah. hole? Because this is all going to change anyway. Yeah. If you put your finger in there, yeah. the switch is just there. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> so we don't have to move the bed anymore. Well done. Yeah. That was a right pain. Mr. Warner's finding shade. So, it's not just us that are seeking the shade, that all these cows have huddled under the shade of a tree. There's a couple of renegades there. Do you know what they are? They're mad cows. This cow's just having a quick drink. Right, so we're heading to the pub. They have ice cold drinks and they have big umbrellas. Seems like as good a reason as any. Well, that was lovely. That ticked the boxes. We didn't realise what time was that. No. Glenn said, what is it, about four o'clock? I looked at my watch and it was quarter to six. Anyway, we're taking a, a slow stroll back now. We've stopped at the shop for a lolly. Here we are. Teal is still in the sunshine. Not enough shade. Well, I need to make some dinner. Don't really want to, but we are hungry, so we need to. Anyway, I've got the haddock pakoras waiting to go in i've got the the cucumber and tomato i've got the mango and chili dip and i've got the cardamom rice i've just got to cook the pakoras right pakoras are in the pan how tasty do these look i am quite surprised you can't pick it up on the camera but there is an absolutely amazing moon emerging from behind that tree hello and welcome to it's friday you got the friday feeling mrs warren hasn't got the friday feeling why have you not got the friday feeling woke up grumpy this she woke morning up a bit grumpy and we both had queen queen so, <laughs> dreams last night it was a full moon last night and Very i don't full. know if anyone else like it has strange dreams when it's full moon i i generally do anyway i had a dream that i met beyonce and her mum and that i ended up filming a vlog for them um and i woke up and i told glenn about my strange dream and glenn said well i had a strange dream, dream too and mine was basically i was running a big event or involved in the big event that was royalty was involved in and you know the little long life milk 
cartons, <laughs> bizarrely, I was having to test them to make sure they were all right. And, the, and, and as I was opening the packets, the lids weren't sealed properly and they were all off. So it was a big time. Then I woke up, thankfully. So I, I said to Glenn, how weird it is that we both dreamt about queens, Queen Bee and the Queen. Well, royalty. Oh, well, anyway, 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 we're on the move. We're yeah. going, I'm going to get Mrs Warner to go and stake out the lock, the lock while I untie and start and we get going. And I'm going to try really hard to cheer up yeah, this morning. Yeah, should be all right. should be cheered up in the next half an hour or so. I, maybe I just needed coffee. Maybe. Right, so the plan was set off this morning whilst it was cooler. That was the plan. It is 20 past nine, so not that early. Lots of boats had the same idea this morning. Lots of people setting off. So a couple of boats just come through. So hopefully this lock will be in our favour. Lock is in our favour. Oh, let's straight open. See? It's gonna be a good day. That's nice and easy, isn't it? <laughs> We've got a couple of boats coming down. Glenn's just coming in. We're all ready to go. We got help at the lock as well this morning. So here Glenn comes, it's busy, there's a boat waiting. There's a boat waiting and that boat was actually waiting as well but has turned around so anyway off we go. I was listening to newscast yesterday and it was saying that farmers are having problems because the grass is dead so they're having to feed their cows on what they'd normally feed them in the winter. Mr Warner's going to pull over, let me jump on. one and only lock that we've got today so we've got a nice little cruise before it gets too hot hopefully we're stopping at the bottom of the soap brewing locks i have come inside i am going to cook a bacon sandwich but not yet i've got an hour or so of work that i want to get done because i know we've got good internet signal here under the glorious bridge all the cows in that field, well, most of the cows in that field are laying down. Oh, if, if only, if only it meant there was rain. Past some moored boats. Check who's out, who's on the tiller. It's been a long time. It has. It's just such a beautiful day. I've been working. I can't tell you how lovely it is to sit here on my laptop working away while we're puttering along. It really is the best life. Right, that's work done for the day, but also the week, so that's good. I am gonna make a bacon sandwich. Uh, I mean, it is midday. We're moored up, bottom of Stoke Bruin, ready to do the Stoke Bruin flight tomorrow morning. See Mrs Warner over there sitting, sitting in the breeze. She's found the shady spot. Well, as you can probably hear, it's a bit breezy out here now. Yeah. So hopefully things will be cooling down. So we, we won't keep you chatting. Thank you for watching. If you've made it to the end of the video, thank you. And we look forward to seeing you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.